Sag sie. Lisa, if your other candidate plans on coming to the meeting, yeah, there was a medical emergency. Okay, meeting. so I just want to make sure they had the pass. Yeah. We're going to start in just a minute, but just testing. Can people hear us in, a, in Zoom land? Okay, sounds like yes. Why don't we go ahead and start? Everybody ready? All right, go ahead and call the meeting to order. Would all who wish join in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. My proposed agenda adjustment, I would make a motion to add item 8A.1.2, which is a second uh, teacher hire. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any other suggestions or agenda questions? We're all in person, so we can vote by hand. All those in favor of the agenda adjustment? Thank you. Next up is the minutes. I would make a motion to adopt the minutes of May 9th. 
2023 is presented. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion or corrections? All those in favor? That's just all zero. I would make a motion to approve warrant 24, payroll warrant 24, fuel warrant number three. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Sorry. <laughs> Wasn't sure if you were writing or really upset about the word. That's as five to zero. Uh, the floor is now open for public comment. Would anybody like to comment? Last chance for public comment. Seeing that, we'll move on. We'll start with acknowledgments. Jake? Uh, nothing. Uh, and we'll pass to Kevin. Nothing at this time, thank you. No, I do. Um, so, we, as you know, we've been working on the outdoor classroom, and uh, it's just about done. There's like one more piece to go in. And there have been a lot of people that have helped and volunteered parents and teachers, um, like Mrs. O, Ms. Neville, Ms. Bear, my kids, you and all there, and a bunch of dad, a bunch of parents, Connor, Dan Dixon, Bill helped out. And then Will Be Will Speedley, if you know, he's like an amazing carpenter, <laughs> and like he. Had this whole big red oak that he was going to use for something else. He just cut it up and made awesome circle, long circle for us and carried it down there. We, me and I made these picnic tables together. He put so much of his time into these things and they're like beautiful works of art and <laughs> these picnic tables. And like, I don't know how to like thank him enough or repay him, but like he just volunteered so much of his time and the tools and we just kind of threw these picnic tables into the bushes and nobody's going to see them, but it's very like for me. And I, I don't know how to like. Or are those um, down over yonder? <laughs> and we're kind of, the, the entrance is you know a little bit obscure because we're trying not to like attract too much attention to mm -hmm. near it. Great, Mark. Uh, nothing tonight. Thank you. Student reps, you can either do this as part of your report or if there's an acknowledgement you want to make now, you're welcome to do that now too. I think we'll just save it for a report. Okay. Actually, sorry. Um, I wanted to congratulate seniors. Uh, it's their final week of classes this week and we did the final report. So I want to congratulate to all seniors to finally make it. You did it. Mm -hmm. Um, I have two tonight, uh, but definitely I echo what Marissa just said. And mine, one of mine is related to what Noah said. Actually, um, wanted to give a shout out to you, Noah, because you're really the the driving force behind this project and supported the teachers in their vision and helped make it um, a reality. And um, the teachers, you know, just sent me a list of all the things that they've observed that you've been doing, from you know writing the grant to seeking the towns of Approval to uh, clearing the site, finding the logs, you know, getting volunteers, uh, your network of volunteers, including, you know, the ones you acknowledged tonight. And uh, the staff is just really excited to begin using the space. And, um, you know, it, it really, uh, for pe people at, at ASA who've been doing some outdoor learning and just, you know, finding spaces to go sit with their children in a circle on the lawn, this is really going to provide a really great, you know, designated space and and so thank you Noah for your um efforts that you know ran into walls at times and you figured out how we could get around them so uh appreciate your efforts there um secondly I want to just acknowledge the uh visual art uh showcase was last week before it was actually week before last uh so maybe we have we acknowledged that yeah. Okay. Uh, and it was in the gym, and it was the first time we've had this in several years now since COVID has interrupted normal um, celebrations like that. It was just wonderful to see, you know, the K pre K to twelve art showcase uh, have um, you know all families from all levels out for that event. Um, and what what I love is having the artwork showcased in a way where we have our elementary artists next to our high school artists and middle school artists just kind of all integrated together um, and being able to see, um, you know, the great work that's produced and also the progression of skills that happens over 
their years in, in the visual art program. And we also had live performers, including Marissa and some friends. And so it was just a really neat evening that, that um, was great to see community kind of activities returning in a, yet another way to, to school. So commending Ms. Barnes, Ms. Anthony, Ms. Ford for making that happen because it's a significant amount of work. And congratulations to the many artists who were showcased that night. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll go out, start go with the reports, and we'll start with the student report. Okay. Uh, we start with our student culture section. Uh, the juniors class Enchanted Garden Prom was a success. Shout out to Mr. Buner and Ben Sidelka for taking some fantastic photos. Scenes and songs were formed last Friday on the 26th in the PAC, and their acts were very well done. Congratulations to all those performers. The Creativity Carnival on May 11th was a huge success. Families from all across the district enjoyed crafts, live music, and concessions. Shout out to all the performers, the NHS students, and our wonderful art teachers who worked so hard to make that happen. The spring concert went really well with a great showing from the orchestra, chorus, and band. And well done to all the performers as well. Sports are also doing really well. Uh, tennis is on track to winning states, uh, and track just performed well in PDCs. The class 25 spike ball tourney went great with lots of money raised for the class 25, and they have plans to expand next year. The Secret Garden is beginning work on garden beds. JMG Pop Up Thrift Store had its last day last Monday. Many clothes were both donated and given to new homes. Enclave has just wrapped up its cover design contest and is now moving on to its printing stage. The Yellow Tulip Project's Hope Garden has bloomed, and their Mental Health Awareness Month Kindness event was a huge success. The Happy Memory Hearts made during Monday's and last Monday's advisory light up, light up advisory to our ways. The chair auction went well, and we raised a good amount of money benefiting the class of 2025. Now, on our academic session, even with AP testing, um, many, many students have persist persisted, and we are excited for their scores this summer. The leaders are finished up, which everyone felt really good about. <laughs> Juniors took their science and yays last Tuesday, last, last Tuesday. Good work. Uh, GWD's summer P5 deadline is June 5th. Seniors' final ac academic day is this coming Friday. Uh, C activities. Uh, Environmental Club held a climate strike last Thursday during Win Win to discuss local and large scale climate issues. Lots of great information was shared. Today is the last day for the Key Club Quilt Left Raffle. Uh, the Jazz MLPI Combo, Combo Conference was last Thursday. Wonderful job to all those who participated. ASA is about to begin their end of year activities, and I assume they've already started them by now. So much is planned for the short trek to the summer. All states was a success. Shout out, shout out to the talented performers Zane Rogenbuck, Riley Knoll, Anna Malloy, Emily Fair, and Aaron Lang. OMS students had their annual rafting trip a few weeks ago. And no concerns uh, so far. Great. Thank you. Thank you for especially for the effort to go across schools. Uh, move on next to director's reports. Lisa? Sure. Um, we've been really busy. Lately, we've had, uh, we're always really busy, I guess, but we've had a lot of transition meetings. We've had transitions of pre-K kids coming into ASA. So those have been nice at that first introduction for, for a lot of families. Uh, we've had a lot of transition meetings for our ASA students going to OMS and then our OMS students going to the high school. Uh, with that, we're, we're also in a big push for the summer programming. Um, we have our ESY services at um, at ASA and also the Summer Stars, which is Title I reading and math. And um, for students moving to uh, OMS and the high school, we're really pushing for those students to get involved uh, with the summer program to kind of make that transition easier for the fall. Uh, we are we've been spending a lot of time planning and restructuring what our programs are going to look like next year. Uh, we're going to be uh, down one teacher at ASA. So how, you know, we've, we've had a lot of conversation about how we're going to divide the caseloads. Uh, and, and people have been really positive and, and working together on that, which is appreciated. And we continue to have those conversations also um, with OMS staff and how we're going to break down caseloads and 
um, and and be able to you know collaborate a little bit more and and um, share our resources. So I think I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think we're going to have some some big changes, but I think they're going to be good for our kids. So, any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and Susan, Director of Learning. Good evening. Um, as the students mentioned, we finished up our state testing last Friday. That's when the window closed. It's also when we administered our measure of academic progress through the NWAs to our kindergarten through second grade students. And I think everybody's glad to um, have that over with. We had four different platforms for test administrators to learn this year, which was a bit of a challenge for um, the adults in particular. The students seem to adjust just fine. Um, We've already started discussing uh, ways we can make things better for next year, how we can possibly change the administration and also make um, the tests a bit more meaningful, hopefully, uh, especially to our older students. And um, tomorrow we start looking at data at the ACES school, at least for the K-1 and 2 um, NWA results, along with other um, literacy data, the Fontes and Pinnell, the Phonemic Awareness, we'll be doing that data review with grade level teams from kindergarten all the way up through fourth grade. And I really appreciate uh, Terry and Maddie and Allison Woodward's help on getting that all organized for, for tomorrow. Um, curriculum work, there's a link in my board report to a map of, of the maps, sort of the progress of where we are with each grade level for the content areas of health and math. And based on things that happened today and things that happened towards the end of last week, I know I need to update that progress um, form to, to, to be a little bit more reflective of what has happened in the last couple of weeks. But still, I'm um, hoping on track to have uh, things ready for health from kindergarten all the way up to grade nine, plus the additional course in high school, ready for feedback in August, as well as math from K to uh, all the way through geometry. So algebra one, algebra two, and geometry for the, the math. Um, I think the process has, um, I've learned a lot along the way. I think others have as well. We're really trying to um, do this well and not just say, check, it's done. So it's taken a bit longer and, and more hours, I think, than originally anticipated. But it's nice to see that we're getting to the, the end stages of these two content areas. Um, it's also an update there around instructional technology. Uh, we're asking for feedback on the grade level skills and um, the technology use statements and expectations. Hadn't gotten a lot of feedback at the end of last week. I think there was just one high school student and one high school middle school parent. So we pushed out again to see if we could get a few more people to, to possibly respond before the tech committee takes a look at things, a little a closer look one more time on June 5th. And um, through that process, we found some areas that we wanna make sure that we provide some training and professional development for staff um, going as, the, as we start next school year. And Wabanaki Studies has really been, I think, a year of building awareness somewhat um, in all content areas and all grade levels. So there was awareness and in particular grade grades and social studies, for example, really trying to broaden um, the awareness of Wabanaki Studies and um, start building relationships and finding resources so that we can uh, do a good job of really incorporating authentic uh, from the Wabanaki people resources into our curriculum. So that's that's a work in progress as well. Um, and then um, the diversity, equity, and inclusion um, leadership team met uh, about a week ago, and there's a link to some of the um, highlights and things we want to nurture from each of the subcommittees. Um, it's, I've been really impressed on how much work those subcommittees have um, managed to do this school year while, while doing everything else that's been happening, particularly, I'd say, the um, ambassador program. It's really exciting that we have um, um, ambassador advisors hired, and that program will be up and running. Um, SSPs are developed and, and still works in progress as we learn how to do this well for our students and, and for our, um, our community, but it's been great to see that work. Um, and we're also using information from our DEI survey that we did with staff um, as some of our planning for professional development for 
next school year. So one of the things that we found in doing that survey was there's some strong support for continued professional development. About 95% of the people support that work. So that was really great to see and a really um, trying to hone in on target probably, um, well, for sure, economic disadvantaged students, um, families that are struggling economically and how to help support them, um, as well as talking about religious differences. One of the other things that we found in the staff survey, it was interesting to see that some of the things that staff felt students felt comfortable in talking about were gender issues, social economics, um, a little bit race, um, and then the things that the adults felt themselves comfortable in were the opposite of what the students or what they thought students would feel comfortable talking about. So some interesting differences there. And um, we hope to get out or we plan to get out the beginning of next week. Uh, the, the pie charts from that DEI staff survey and some, uh, some summary highlights, and I'll make sure that the board members receive those as well. But we wanted to thank the staff for their time. We had 146 staff members out of about 175 reply. So that was just wonderful. And we really appreciate their time. And um, it worked well, I think, to have most people were able to do that during an early release time, which was really a wise use of time, I think. Um, yeah, that's What's going on? <laughs> Great, thanks. I mean, just to uh, zoom out and highlight for the board, and then I had a question for you, Susan, the curriculum. What we ended up setting up is a five-year rotation through the topics. We didn't want to do the whole curriculum in one year, right? But this is a new pattern for us. So, you know, as Susan kind of talked about, there's some been some learning processes and um, maybe longer. So those two topics will go through a full K-12 curriculum update and then come to the board for approval, probably typically at the end of the year, but in this case in August. And the topics this year were health and math. Do you know, remember Susan, what's uh, on cue for the two next year? I do, English language arts and visual performing arts. Great, thanks. So just to kind of cement that in people's minds, it's a you know five-year plan, but it, it's, it's a long-term plan to start to make a habit as part of our process. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. Great. So next up, we have the board goals workshop. Uh, report. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, just a few items. Um, first, I want to report on resignations. I um, There were a couple that I emailed the board about since we went ahead and did advertisements, just to make sure everyone uh, is aware. Well, um, Nick Butler from Asa Adams, our physical education teacher, has resigned effective end of the year. Ashley Satry, uh, ASA special ed teacher, resigned effective end of the year. Molly Priest, middle school, high school, choral um, and music um, teacher, resigned effective end of the year. And I don't think you knew of this one, Aaron Putnam, our ASA day custodian, uh, resigned and actually didn't give notice that Bill's doing double duty right now. Um, and so those are the four recent resignations that we've received. And as such, we're putting together interview committees, yet more interview committees. Uh, and we'd like to get some um, board representatives lined up for these because some will get started soon. Um, so we have four interview committees we're looking for representatives on. Um, ASA Special Ed, the ASA PE, the ASA Behavior Coach, uh, new position, and the Middle High School Choir. And I know that, um, Kevin, you just served on a couple of sped, uh, special ed committees. I'm just going to volunteer for the behavior coach. And Noah, um, um, you just volunteered to put that out. So, but I think you had indicated interest, Noah, in one of the positions. E okay, the ASA PE. Yeah. So, and other. What's the time frame for interviews? Um, probably need some help from administrators on your time frames. Yeah, we haven't scheduled them yet. We're usually, we try to put them around. You know, three to four o'clock. So staff staying this over this week, next week. Uh, probably the beginning of next week. Yeah, some of it depends on applicant goal what we're seeing. Yeah, that that yeah. sense for the special education. Yeah, Here. I was hoping for the ASA positions to interview by the end of um, our last week. So at the latest by the end of the school year. Um, so looking depending on the applicant pool in the next two weeks. 
Yeah, probably if we have good applicants for those positions that we can move forward with a good pool, we'll want to do that so we can hire at June 20th if possible. Yes. And I, I can chime in, Meredith, on the uh, coral uh, position. Uh, Sam and I are collaborating. We're, I mean, we're just starting to get applications now. I, I, I think, like everyone has already said, it'd be nice to wrap it up by the end of middle of June, you know, by, by the end of school it, um, or shortly thereafter. That would be uh, ideal. Okay, so did you say behavior coach, Kevin, or? I did. I do think I could jump the gun all of a sudden, though. So uh, yeah. I don't do want to hear other people's preferences. I can do coral. Okay. Right. Great. Good. And I mean, I am interested in. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think Lisa runs a, a tech ship. So the behavioral coach is a position I, I'd be interested in hearing about. Yeah, and Carrie is running that committee. So. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'd be happy. I'm out of town next week, but I could Zoom at the yeah. three, four o'clock hour, and I'm back the week after. Um, I guess Coral and Behavior Coach were the two I had the most interest in, but okay. I'd be happy to do any. You just need one board member for mm -hmm. So yeah. no one's volunteered for PE. Um, Kevin and Brian for Behavior Coach, Jake for Coral, Brian for Coral. You should do Coral if you want. And then we need ACE of special ed as well. So, so nobody's volunteered for No ACE one's volunteered for that. So, All right, I could do that one if you want to do the behavioral coach. So, is that sober? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Mark, you're off the hook. No, I've already done P or Coral. That's fine. Uh, you'll be the next one. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying over for sure. I'm okay. Fine. okay. Thank you all. Um, and the committee chair and Rachel will be in touch with um, more details. Um, I wanted to also mention, um, typically our last board meeting of the year, we have a data workshop. <clears throat> and we're going to, Brian and I have talked about um, scheduling and we're going to go ahead with that. Um, there's just a, a, a difference. And I think we've referenced it a couple of times through just a reference in a board report from a principal or Susan, but um, this year, NUIA's, um the spring administration for grades three through eight and um, 10, we, we won't have the scores back until sometime in early fall. So we don't have scores for those grades um, in the normal way that we typically do. Um, and so what, the admin team talked about, and I talked with Brian, and he seemed to like this idea, um, is having ASA and OMS put together a data presentation similar to what the high school did a month or so ago that provided kind of a more in-depth look at you know, their school, aside from just our typical student achievement presentation. I think um, you know everyone really enjoyed that kind of more um, diverse look at the school um, school data and Carrie and Richard are beginning to put that together for us. So we're going to have that um, on the typical day at the typical time. We typically do an hour and a half. So we have enough time for the presentation and some discussion and you know maybe a quick break in between that and the board meeting. Um, so that I want to let you know that that's our plan and what we're working toward. Is that, is that um, the 20th of June? The 20th. Yeah, so it would be a 4.30 start um, so that we can have enough time for both presentations for about um, probably 30 to 35 minutes and then some time for Q&A and then transition into board meeting. Will, so, we have, will we be able to look at it ahead of time? What do you think? Uh, um, we will strive for that. Yeah, <laughs> Carrie and Richard. We'll strive for that. Yeah. <laughs> so our meetings on Tuesday, a goal would be to have it to you maybe by that um, Monday morning. Um, I, I think that's a reasonable goal. Um, I wanted to let you know that uh, we were also the Von Thibodeau, the contractor for the, the field remediation has been up at the field as of midweek last week working on that project and um, are moving forward. 
Um, Bill did a walkabout today, had some concerns, and we've emailed the contractor, so we're awaiting a response on that. Um, so I was to be late tomorrow, but we will see, because I'm not sure I want them to proceed with that until they can satisfy our concerns. So, um, I'm sorry. Bill, did your concerns have to do with the rocks? I saw you pulling on the back of your truck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Those are the pictures I was sending with the, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing larger than a quarter inch supposed to be in there. How can there possibly be rocks there this time? Well, I think uh, what has happened is last fall they did all the what's the word for it when they put it through the screening. screening. Um, and there was a lot of oversight for that. And then when they came back, they've been doing the leveling. And I think I'm not sure that material was screened. I, I would guess that's where the problem is. That 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 material should have been screened out of those size rocks all the way through. Yep. Um, so I'm not sure whether that might have come from the bridge that they built and got a little bit of that bridge material mixed in. Is the only thing, the only reason I could come up with it is uh, because the underlayment, the four inch underlayment is supposed to be two, two inch minus and the root zone is supposed to be quarter inch minus. And as you can see by the back of my truck, it's not even close. How many rocks are we talking about? And obviously, just with, from what you I said, I got 15. And this is ridiculous. Yeah. One was about I mean, that big. So, and they all kind of, so. You know, we'll, they can't proceed. They have to give us, you know, some form of remediation of these issues. They've never seen anything like this. Yeah. It's pathetic. Screening is not a complex or it's not a real operation on construction, <laughs> really. Isn't. So they've, I mean, the the material that they that's just been brought on site is the problem because right. we watched last fall really yeah. carefully. Or Bill watched last fall really carefully. So they whatever they've done the last week. Yeah, and you know, looking at what they brought on site in, in the initial look was looked great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went up and pawed through a bunch of it, and it really looked great. And, it didn't come to bear until they started getting it all leveled been leveling out. today. Yeah. And that's really what. So it was up today. And it, it was blaring. I mean, you could just see them, see the top. I mean, I had to dig them out. You could see the top of the rocks. And so as I dug one, I mean, I just kept digging and digging and digging and digging. So yeah, it's, a, it's an issue. And you could see the top of the rocks. Obviously, they could see the top of the rocks. And they didn't do anything about the rocks. Yes, so you know what we know. That's all they know. Well, one is to get a good field. Goal two is to have conversations about compensation. But yeah, first things first. I could add some goals. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and just as a, a FYI, I wanted the rest of the board to know that um, last week, I think it was nine. Uh, the administrative team and some other counselors, members of our emergency response team, and Brian went and had a uh, joint discussion with the town council with about our SRO program. The town council had some questions. The town manager reached out to me and we provided um, just a brief presentation about the program and had some discussion about, you know, how it looks in Orno and, um, you know, spoke really to the value of the program and how it, it um, plays out here. And it was just a nice dialogue back and forth. I think um, it would be, you know, good information. I plan on sharing that presentation with you just so you can see what we shared. Um, really, it's it's nothing outside of probably the kinds of things you hear just from us talking about um, our emergency response planning process each year and um, just in some of our emergency responses, how the SROs are a part of that. Um, but there are probably elements that you don't hear as much about uh, in terms of the relationship building and the parts of the, um, how they are really become a part of the school um, community. And maybe you've observed it actually just by being a part of the school community yourself. So it was a, a good conversation. I, um, I want to allay any concerns from anyone listening that it wasn't, you know, about we want to cut the SRO program. It wasn't that kind of conversation. I think it was to raise just awareness and build common understanding about the program. That those are all the items I had. Thanks. Are there any questions or comments? Thank you. Mm -hmm.
All right, so next up, and I think I'm probably failed to, I was intending to send out notice to the board as a reminder, but um, we do have the board goals workshop with Meredith and I discussed it and we decided it. basically we have space tonight, so we should grab it before the next two weeks. And goals are always a two week process, right? We don't try and wrap up goals in a single week. However, I'm also aware that we have some hirings and we have somebody here waiting for those. Mm -hmm. So I guess my proposal would be is that we swap 8A1 and 7, and that would have the benefit of um, getting to the hiring quickly for people who are waiting for that. And it would give everybody else a little bit of time to digest and think about the fact we're going to do a goal setting. And that includes you know, all the administration and people on Zoom. The goal setting is traditionally done as a workshop. It's informal. It's conversation. It's not just for the board. Everybody's invited to participate. We can talk about the format, but we might do the, the SWAT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and then try and turn that into goals so people can start thinking about that while we have a brief executive session. So people are amenable to that. I would make a motion to switch the agenda to place item 8AI next on the list and then to return to the regular agenda. So the second. A second. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor of the agenda change? Okay. I would make a motion to go into executive session under one MRSA 4056A appointment of personnel. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion of the executive session? All those in favor? We will go into executive session.
Okay, now we'll come back to uh, we'll pick up the co curriculars. I don't think there are any, but we'll come back to that point in the agenda. But board goals so it's uh, a traditional, um, yeah, it's required by policy that the board set goals every year. As you can see, we've kind of made it a focal point, we put it on every agenda along with. And some of the learning process along the way is we separated out a set of values and a set of core responsibilities because we'd always say, well, we have to have this core responsibility to go on. They're like, no, that's just a core responsibility to handle policies and hiring and uh, some of these kinds of things. So, but then we also set goals. These are district wide goals. They could be board goals, but they're often district wide goals. Uh, somewhere between four and six each year. Sometimes goals repeat. Oftentimes, some of the goals repeat. So the goal, you know, so oftentimes we see some continuity and some turnover in our list of goals, and uh, that's fine. The process we've used in the past few years, like I say, we've done it as a workshop, but we didn't, you know, we didn't pre-clear starting an hour early, and we didn't feel like we needed to with the agendas it is tonight. So we're doing it in the middle of a board meeting, but we'll keep this pretty informal. Um, what we've done in the past, we've. we've just gone around the room and done the SWOT analysis, which is a strength and a weakness. These are internal or innate to our schools relative to other school districts. And an opportunity and a threat, these are external. These are changes in the environment in which all schools are operating. Just as a way to kind of think through uh, the landscape. And then we've started having a conversation about goals. We've just kind of brainstormed goals. And oftentimes it collapses, right? We merge a few and it collapses it into a list the other hand, I'm aware almost all of us are doing the SWOT analysis as part of the strategic plan. People feel like they would like to do a quick SWOT analysis now, or do the, we can know is saying no, but when we get other opinions, let me or would people like to dive straight into goal setting? Where and I include everybody on Zoom on this too. Administration and audience is welcome to participate in this particular process. And I guess just so people who aren't involved with strategic planning are aware. All the administrators and board members, plus you know, student um, endorses on the team, plus parent representatives and teachers have just done this analysis of the district through our strategic planning process. It's getting started. So, I guess my head. I would say I. I think I want to hear what other people say, but I don't feel like coming up right now. Like, well, you can always pass. Yeah, yeah. Okay. if I can pass on this. <laughs> I'm not hearing a I'm just going to say we're going to do it very quick. We can do it superficially. Uh, Rachel, can you give me make me a co host so I can share your screen? Mm -hmm. I'm trying. Actually, yeah, you're the host, Mara. If you want to do it at the wrong person, yeah, I can actually do it usually, but it's not should be good. Yeah. So let's just, uh, as part of doing this efficiently, let's uh, instead of going around the room, let's just strengths. Anybody, anybody can shout it out. This applies to people on Zoom. Just uh, un un Zoom unmute. And shout out, what do you think are some strengths in this district? Differentiation. Differentiation in instruction, I assume. Yes. yes. Yeah. As far as meeting, uh, uh, there's a lot of effort to meet kids where they're at individually and then moving forward. Um, then, so you're doing just district, like the whole district. The whole district, not yeah. school level. And not like the like board, but the. Not what? Not just the board. I mean, right. This is like we're setting goals for the districts. So this is strength for the district. I would put small class sizes. And we did strategic planning. I said strong administration team. I uh, think I said strategic planning. Um, the community support for education is significant. You're welcome to pass, but you're welcome to jump into what's your favorite thing about the Orlando schools? Um, I think I would add to what Ms. Higgins said, which is like our support for especially the higher academics and trying to expand our students' horizons. So. Such a fancy way to say we did pre college courses. 
<laughs> I do what I can. Uh, I appreciate the um, the community that is built around our students by educators and students. There, put a plus one on that. I was. I guess I just remember when I it was just uh, the love of this. So, like that was the thing I had at the strand. Which is the love of the fact like the staff and everyone forms with each other and it's and then you like the other students. So. Okay. That was mm -hmm. sort of community support available. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and how much are adults care? That's yeah. Okay. That's talking about. Yeah, that feels different than what I was intending. Yeah. Like more exactly. I was intending more of that. Like a that large or, or now. Yep. Yeah. Like voting for budgets, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. I think the strength of ours is um trying to kind of say this. I think we're I think the culture here is more accepting of a wide range of students than it is maybe in other places. Anybody on Zoom want to jump in? I'll add Brian. Um I'll say that for me it's the staff is a strength of our district. Um and they will do whatever it takes for their students. I, I think, Brian, we also, I see like a, a broad range of uh, course offerings, like, like I think, you know, athletics, uh, the arts, um, a lot of different academic offerings for, for uh, you know, smaller size schools. Yep. All right. This is just to stimulate the thinking. It doesn't have to be a comprehensive list, but I'm going to go ahead and jump to weaknesses. This is the one nobody wants to jump in on, but uh, we have a growth mindset in this district, so we're allowed to talk about things we'd like to see change or grow or improve. I think we need to do or figure out how to do a better job at getting students from sending town more involved in, in the school culture and the extracurriculars and the other things that are on here. Jake, I know you had differentiation as a strength, but I, I still think we have a little work to do on challenging um, all students. I, I, I think we're, I think we do a lot really well and I, I think we're growing, but um, uh, I still I still hear from, st from students who are really bored for large multiple year stretches of their school career. Yeah. I think to add on to that, I think to try to actually push some students to want to be challenged because I think there are a lot of kids who are very content with where they're at and they just because they don't really like to do that much they don't have to try that hard so there's sometimes just like a lack of a of a want to actually be challenged so I'm going to put this in ed speak but create a growth mindset is that a fair description Definitely. yeah I, I would say I think there's room to make the community feel more cohesive and together and actually have more involvement with all members and feel like there's a I mean there's all these like separate love of everybody for different things but like a certain cohesive community sense I think. Yeah that was gonna be one I I think we could involve in particular parents community more broadly. Yeah, I mean, parents, staff. To, I, I yeah. Phrase it in, well, yeah, there's connection with staff too, but so I have more community cohesiveness, and I'm going to put a sub point of it. I'm inviting the community more into our schools. I've been in about 10 districts and whatever, about eight, but not the worst. The school in uh, Montreal used to be run by the nuns until about 10 years ago was less inviting <laughs> literally we could not go in after school uh when my son had to go pick up his hat we had to send our first grade son in by himself but um so we're nowhere near that but i've been in a lot of other schools where there's a community events and the whole community just feels like they're coming to the schools at marissa um to add to the community cohesiveness is community between schools i know that we had it more uh before covid and since covid i personally feel pretty separate from ASA with being up the hill and sometimes very separate from middle school even there right down the hall. Any other weaknesses? Anybody on Zoom want to jump in? 
I think Kevin's been trying okay. to get away with that. That's not very good. I'm horrible at poker. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, and I think this connects to the growth mindset, and I know it's something in process. And so I would say it's a weakness, but I know it's being worked on. You know, Meredith Diamond talked about, and Susan talked about the uh, book club around grading. I do think grades can get in the way of a growth mindset. So thinking about our assessment, how do we assess learning in a way that supports growth mindset? And so revisiting things like grades, which I recognize would put us on the horizon. You know, I don't think it's a. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think I said something similar to this in the um, strategic planning work, but it's uh, sometimes I feel like the way we've always done things is a detriment to our moving forward. So that change and tradition is difficult to reconcile. I would kind of piggyback on that a little bit and, and tie that to while I think overall performance of the district is is very good. It seems to me that there are some pockets of declining either enthusiasm or activity or involvement. And we need to we need to address those. And some of that problem might be resistance to trying new things. We could do more to teach self advocacy to especially with kids with uh, plans it's hard to stand up to your teacher and helping teach like what's good and that if you're allowed something you're allowed it feel free to add other things i'm just gonna kind of move us along in the spirit of uh you know stimulating the brain not a comprehensive list opportunities things changing in the larger world that come into the schools that present an opportunity I would say our DEI work. Yeah. Like Dorset said, we have advanced academic opportunities with our um, college and AP classes. Piggyback off that with, uh, you know, is, is it Katie Quirk? Uh, yeah, she's, uh, the relationships she's been building with community partners and other organizations along those lines as well. I think a lot of these are two edged, right? There's a threat and an opportunity, but um, I think internships is something that this district, I, I think there's some timing after COVID and switching to going direct to jobs. So it's got a bit of a threat component too, but I, I think there's an opportunity to. Uh, have a stronger story around internships and workplace work studies. It kind of goes with something I remember um, someone saying in our strategic plan squad uh, around multiple pathways. Aren't even leading up to. Thank you. Yeah. I guess I think what I had said in that strategic plan was the the work around alternative modes of assessment and motivation and um, different ways of seeing school, <laughs> like what education means. So, like, there's been a lot of research and work and models out there about different ways to teach. Active learning Well, I mean, you've said that a couple times. I think that maybe deserves its own bullet. Anybody else want to jump in here before we switch to threats? I think something that ties a little bit to the, um, the different. Um, Pathways after graduation is um, our access to UTC is an opportunity for us to access that for students to show them that, you know, give them those opportunities if they're so interested. Core and graduation with distinction, too. Yeah. 
and JMG. Brett's economics, economy, inflation, mental health needs. Yeah, uh, mental health needs. I think, I mean, yeah. Dang. yeah. What, was your, what was your bullet? Well, I mean, there's different flavors of this, but uh, both students and staff, mm -hmm. right? I mean, with staff, I'd probably describe it more as burnout, although it obviously is a mental health need. The students it starts to bleed into behavioral as well as mental health, but um, there, there's flavors of this. And, you know, a lot of it's pandemic, but. Um, it ties into truancy as well. Yep. I think uh, like uh, it goes with burnout, but like finding new uh, qualified people to fill uh, vacancies is is uh, you know coming increasingly more difficult. Yeah. The substance abuse was a surprise to me at the strategic. Yeah. Something that we've been talking about is um, the the disconnect between the world we were occupying before and the world that we've we are now occupying post pandemic, and um, the reality that a lot of the the plays or the strategies we used to be able to rely on before um, simply are are no longer applicable here. So um, we're living in a reality that we don't yet understand. With students about whom we have a lot to learn. I think we have room to bridge um, connections and relationships. You know, when you said economics, I've been in conversations with families that that feel like there's a, a real gap. Well, we all see there's a real gap with families and and. Um, you know, what some have and, and what some don't have. But um, a lot of families don't feel like their voices are heard if, if they're the have-nots. So how to, how to change that and bridge that is a threat and an opportunity. And I would add to that, teaching students that they are worth something because many of them feel very worthless and we have to teach them how to be worthful and show them that we care and when you do that it reflects in their behaviors um, so i'm going to start jumping us to goals but if somebody wants to go back that's that's the end point for tonight so if somebody wants to go back feels a burning thing that we missed feel free to take us back so just to uh, briefly, let, let's start with the goals we already have on the table. Continue recovery and reinvention from COVID. My thought is we might have some related things like mental health or burnout, but I wouldn't you know, describe them like recovery from COVID. So I'd be inclined to let that one drop, but uh, see what other people think. Uh, implement the DEI action plan for the district and develop ongoing practices. Finalize major construction, update capital improvement plan and develop continuous upgrade processes. Establish and implement a regular curriculum review process and publish a written curriculum. Build a shared understanding of the purpose of an appropriate amount of student awards and work to challenge and stretch all students. Uh, I've started giving my opinions, but I wanted to shut up and give somebody else the first shot. Wh which of those do people think ought to be carrying forward? I think we should move the, the final one of those to ongoing fundamental responsibilities. I, I can't imagine that we're ever going to not. Prioritize that. Yeah. That would be my suggestion. I agree. Yeah. And it's sort of implicit in um, sort of an achievement value one. I guess we put it on here because we felt like we had some specific need to work on it. But um, okay. I guess I'd also be inclined to agree to let um, the first one draft. 
I kind of think we accomplished the third one. I mean, we got we got to see it through, but we got it for the first time since I've been on the board. I think we actually have a solid plan and kind of commitment to go forward with that thing. Yeah, we're a long ways from where we were five years ago. I mean, it doesn't mean that we're not going to backslide, but right yeah. now it's probably the best spot we've ever done. Yeah, in the last decade at least. I also think that we addressed the energy thing. I would agree. I mean, I appreciate there's ongoing work. I know high school is still doing that, but um, I think as a district wide goal, I agree. Um, I guess, for, I mean, I, I did a little bit, I'm saying that I, I didn't win that. <laughs> but, um, I don't see that, that I'm going to, um, but I, I do. I, I guess I would like to sort of keep tracking like what of those ideas and how things are evolving. I don't feel like I really understand what's shifted. I mean, I know it's in a couple of reports, but so I don't know that it needs to be a whole big priority, but I would definitely appreciate like growth in that direction and continuing that conversation. Um, yeah. Sometimes Meredith and I make notes of conversation we want to continue to don't rise to the level of the goal. Yeah. I'm sure they come back as a report during. I might want to come back and keep poking at that from time to time to see if I can group any more, but yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's at least adjacent to the ideas of theories and assessments. Yeah. It's in the ballpark. And that it, and those two things are adjacent, at least the growth mindset, you know, the ability to take risks to to, to make failure a consistent learning opportunity. And not something to be avoided because there is some sort of disincentive or punishment attached to it. But there's at least a there's at least a sort of ry rhizomatic connection there. In my opinion, I think we've also gone a long way towards accomplishing the fourth goal. I think Susan has led the curriculum committee in a you know, direction that feels like we're well on the way. I mean, just, we do have a regular curriculum review process now. And yeah. um, so I, I think that obviously we want to make sure it continues, but I think it's it's probably safe to take that off, at least in my view. And I think perhaps rewording what we say under ongoing a bit. Yeah. So the only one we haven't either said keep or drop is PEI. I'm thinking that's at least for another year of keep. I would think so. We have a lot of work going on that. Early enough in that process. I mean, obviously, a huge amount of progress has been made, but I think there's still a lot to do. Yeah. All right. So that's uh, that's revisiting our last past goals. I'm sorry. Um, what did we say in regards to construction update that we I mean, Mark argued, I would agree that um, that's obviously something we're going to keep doing, but that, um, the bulk of that yeah, we were in a different place than we were five years ago as a district level goal. Now it's just Bill's job instead of a district level goal. <laughs> I say that with a smile, but I also know that that's actually true, that you're doing a lot of work to make this happen. And we have a capital improvement plan and we funded an improvement plan and it's kind of at a different, different uh, place. Good luck, Mr. Cody. Mm -hmm. That's the book. <laughs> good challenge. Good challenge. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, on to new goals. What would people bring forward as well? I guess that's not really the new goal, but what, what are some other new goals people would bring forward? I guess after shaking my head at that swap, I found it really useful. So <laughs> <laughs> I felt like Peter of uh, that spot. But the two things that jumped out to me. One you said, which is active learning and the community cohesiveness. I think it's a good thing that I would love to see. Could you add active learning to the work to stretch uh, and challenge all students? We could. We'll, we'll do a merger process in a minute, but we could also argue on them separate. Let, let's just brainstorm a list and then we'll try and compare the list. We have to have something about. Um, Meeting the, the mental health goal, meeting the mental health challenges of the students. There's something around that, you know, increasing mental health issues. I would agree with that. I think we also have to state the obvious that the strategic planning process needs to be on there, right? And that we're, mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. Taking up a huge amount of time. Mm -hmm. like, what we did the end. Jumping up from Jake's and begin combining some earlier comments about the acknowledged care of staff and faculty for each other and for students. I mean, it's one thing to 
to care, another thing to implement care in curriculum and pedagogy. I think it'd be quite quite different, right? To know your to know your teacher cares for you, but for the class itself to be a healing space. Those are those are big goals. So I can imagine that working into mental health. You know, how how is the classroom becoming a place of healing? I know that sounds rude, but that, no, that's exactly the way. Yeah, I know you're on board. Yes, I know exactly. <laughs> there, there is stuff written there the last time again. The classroom has a site of healing. I mean, teaching can be a healing practice. And I, I think lots of educators wish their pedagogy was healing or they aspire to a healing pedagogy. But it's hard. But I think that's back to learning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I, I go back and forth as, um, you know, sort of staff where staff is at and burnout. I think it's extremely real. I think it's extremely logical. I also don't know if we make it as a district goal. I don't know what that looks like or if that can change our behavior, maybe. So I, I'm a little ambivalent about whether that belongs or not. I mean, it's a reality. We need to recognize the reality. But is it just a reality lurking over things or is there something we do as a goal? I mean, just having, you know, actually, I think teachers really generally appreciate massage sessions at PD, but I also think that's not going to solve the problem, right? So is there something we do as a goal that's concrete, or is that just a reality that we continue to keep going? They're in the classroom, so like, I, don't, I don't know. Like for me, when I say the classroom, I, I also mean the teacher is the ed tech, not just like teachers doing things to students, but the, the act of teaching that the classroom environment could I know it's something like a stretch, but it really could be, has been for me in, in my evolution as a teacher, and has become more healing for me as well. I'm not just trying to suggest that teachers should do more things and then separately heal, but maybe the classroom itself can be less of a pull, but also something rejuvenating. I'm not, I'm not trying to argue against that. Yeah. No, I totally agree with you. I can also tell you my read of the mood of the staff is saying, well, you should teach differently is not going to feel healing. It's going to feel yeah. like fair yeah. burnout. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, we talk about it in different settings, different groups of people, and we talk about, you know, what might what might help? Oh, I, I, we get all kinds of answers, one example. none of which are tangible, except, you know, maybe one that I've heard that I do with both. So if we're going to help a little bit, down the ASA, you know, help, help teachers sure. yeah. plan to deal with the different um, Behaviors that they see from students post pandemic. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I can't really think of anything tangible that I, I know we've talked about at the high school, um, like a substance abuse counselor having some kind of access to, to that, uh, especially for students who, um, you know, might get into trouble for, for that or are struggling to come to school because of that. Um, those people are hard to find and we've looked, but. I mean, so, I mean that's one concrete thing, right? Is something like continuing to evaluate resources to meet student needs and support teachers in meeting student needs. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a goal. But, yeah. I mean, it's sort of like kind of, kind of saying, I mean, I think that like community cohesiveness to me is creating a space of social networks to like be your support network for staff and, and parents and, and students. Like I've seen in other schools, it's the most part of it's sort of like, it's not the same kind of addressing the mental health needs in a direct way, but it is creating that support network that allows things to heal. Mm -hmm. um, so I see that as part of that work. Yeah. Anybody? Oh, no, no, I just want to add on to that that I think um bolster community support and interaction creates a sense of community that is really necessary to create the, the morale necessary for creating change and really just being motivated to just become better versions of ourselves, I guess, in a way. So yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, you just did an interesting flip too, right? I know oftentimes in solving problems, it's helpful to go from naming the problem to naming the solution, right? And the solution to burnout is morale, right? So obviously, burnout is another word for lack of morale, but the positive thing in it is increasing morale. I know that I could come across really shallow, you know, rah rah, and like, 
pass out whatever candy with red riot logos on it at, uh, at, and you know no teacher should think that we think that that's going to solve the problems but but it is a positive thing. it's a main and then a positive way right? not increasing morale so we're still circling around burnout morale um just curious if there are other students or anybody on zoom any other goal you big goal that we think we're missing I guess I would add help teachers, especially new teachers coming on with um, not all teachers come to the plate or to the bat with behavior management pl um, plans for their classroom. That's a really um, hard thing for some of them. So to have a good mentor for them is a very important thing. So to make sure that teachers feel valuable and that they can help each other along the way. that they have a short phrase for that um cooperative teaching with um strategic planning with behavior management plans how's that because with that prop with the problems we see is because they're so overwhelmed with behavior management they can't even teach a lesson that becomes a problem for those who really are there to want to learn. So we have to figure out a plan to be able to make it that that disruption in the classroom is not going to affect other students' opportunity for learning. I wonder how it would affect the board goal if that's better placed elsewhere. Yeah. And those are conversations that we're having on the administrative level that really school level. Yeah. Um, I guess we talked about a little bit in other contexts, but the developing the assessment of mental health, I mean, it's under mental health, but like, not like in the, um, I feel like some data on, or somehow, I, mean, I know folks are doing that in DEI, but um, it's really getting the vibe of speaking stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Based on, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I will throw one out there. Maybe it's a outlier, but um, we're at the it's more so right. Brought up the uh, you know students um, gaining some sense of self advocacy to be able to you know, challenge, um, I guess, you know, teachers or yeah, respectfully when when there's a place to do so. And there's sort of like a something I think about a lot in how do we raise, how do we nurture learners so they go into the world. And productively disrupt. I mean, Meredith H talked about kind of being stuck in patterns, and it's easy for all of us to get stuck in patterns. But I think I think a lot of like being a responsible citizen is being able to mess things up within the system. I and mean, a big part of America is the origin of America is messing stuff up, right? Mm -hmm. Of getting to a point being like, no, uh, not anymore, and we're going to stop that. And there is. And you know, I hope teachers don't drag me to the woods tonight. But there's an there's an element of compliance, which is really nice in the classroom, right? It's really nice. I mean, college is wonderful because you recruit all the compliance students to come to your classroom, and there there are no classroom management issues at college. <laughs> we just get all the compliant folks. Um, but there's you know there's a, another double edge there that certain types of pushback are, are generative and they're kind of exciting because they're they're getting to the point where they're going to go into the world. And challenge things that are wrong, especially these DEI things. Like, when do they push back, and how do they push back, and how do we have conversations about how students push back, um, and how teachers and administrators work through that? Because it can be it can be rough on us too. You know, we're we're used to kind of putting our rules up and saying this is what you're going to do. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure how to phrase that, but I, I'm glad Marissa brought it up, and it is something that's dear to my heart. 
in a related topic, and this didn't come out in any of our SWAT, but um, there's starting to be increasing news articles about how schools have given up on civic education mm -hmm. and education on how to be a citizen, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is very related to that, you know, how to engage with society, be a change agent in society. We gave up on that about 20 years ago. Okay, yeah, we did. We gave up on a lot of educational things about 20 years ago. Um, you know, sexual health and education uh, has really defined since then. Um, practical skills, right? I mean, UTC is a great thing, but for the kids that aren't going to UTC, are they graduating knowing how to cook a meal and to use a screwdriver to fix the bicycle? I'm not. So, yeah, they don't have to practical skills are, are beyond just kind of skills that help you conduct like actual activities in the day to day world, but it's skills for citizenship and being, being a responsible citizen of a free society and we just don't do that and it's not just or no we yeah. just as a, we as a, a nation no longer do that yeah it's it's bad um, you know meredith diamond mentioned learning with students too and I, I think this is one of those places where um i don't know about the other older people in the room but i'm i'm struggling to keep tabs on technology and social media and, and i try but there's a great place here for these conversations of you know information literacy and fake news and democracy and freedom for learners to to help um, the uh, potentially older uh, educators who aren't uh, as fluent in these technologies to engage in a conversation. Is that right? I mean, I think we we know that the younger folks are engaging with a different part of society on average than some of the older folks, and there's a great potential there connected to civic education um, and activism that could happen, I think. Could be, certainly. Right? I learned a lot from us. The next 18 months, AI is going to make it so that everyone can tell the difference. So <laughs> we should talk about AI in school, chat DPT. It's not happening in the classroom. Yeah, it's not happening in the email. No, it's a big gap in email. All you have to do is ask for references and chat GPT is completely exposed, but it makes it a lot topic. It literally makes up all of its citations. There are some of those conversations happening in middle school and high school technology classes. Um, I know that Ms. Jackson Van Horn uh, has conversations about uh, fake news and about, they had a whole conversation about how AI and Minecraft are helpful learning tools, but they are also Boys and shouldn't be used in you know extremely academic places. So things are happening in that awesome. regard. I mean, it's kind of a, the one place we are teaching a little bit of citizenship is in the you know if you put through Susan's link to the te technology. There's a lot about healthy use of social media. There's a lot about fake news and uh, how to verify information on the internet. And kind of interesting that we're circling back to injecting citizenship into our technology, but not into you know, showing up at uh, the annual budget meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Dorissa. Thank you, Neil. Very, very good. Yeah, you can do that. I'm sorry. You can do that. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Down here, we can have cake. We had cake. We did have cake. Yes, it was good cake. But we'll have to spread the water next time. Brian actually thought telling people it was going to be fun and going to be crap. Yeah, shut up. I I feel like we're approaching probably where we pick the the uh, biggest fruit in the, the orchard here, and maybe so we'll put all of these things into the agenda so people see at least a week in advance what we're talking about. And either Meredith and I, I don't know, we decided if it's two, it's probably two meetings from now where we get back to this. I actually had to put it on an agenda today for next week that kind of stuck up on Rachel and I. <laughs> okay. And I looked back at my notes and we said the 20th, we were going to return to this. Yeah. So this will come back, not in two weeks, but in four weeks. Well, I think it's probably three weeks, very right? good. Come back in three weeks, um, two board meetings from now, where we will have to finalize this into a set of goals. But, Okay. Any, any, especially anybody out there in Zoom land, anything we're missing? What's the big obvious thing that we forgot? All right. We got everything. I, I love it when that happens. Okay. So we'll, uh,
continue on. I don't think there are any co curricular nominations over there. Uh, so we have one policy, KF. These are just some tweaks coming out of our um, ongoing policy review. And uh, yeah, just some very small changes, um, including the Performing Arts Center. So this is the community use of facilities, adding the Performing Arts Center, changing some designate uh, pronouns and designations of who's using them. Yeah, really very small technical changes. So I would make a motion to uh, approve as adopted uh, the revision as uh, presented. Let me start over again. I would make motion to adopt the revision as presented of policy KF. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor? Passes 5-0. Uh, on the subcommittee reports, policy subcommittee, our last meeting uh, is Thursday, and we have, I believe, two policies on them. Uh, we've got to finish up with JLF, um, Child Abuse Prevention, and we're going to do a quick revisit of DBH, which is uh, public comment. Am I forgetting anything? I think. And, uh, you know, we, we have completed our re revision. I'm sure we'll have some work in the fall based on the legislature, but. Um, we have gone from uh, reactive to proactive on policy for the last couple of years. Anything on UTC? We meet on Thursday. Okay. Spruce. We meet on June 8th. All right. Curriculum subcommittee is a, a week from Thursday. Anything else, Susan? Nope. Uh, June 8th. <laughs> Kitchen project Alphabet is due June 13th. That's when they're opening. The office project is behind that project. Uh, they're just sending that those drawings out to the state fire marshal. So I would expect that would be ready to go to bed sometime. Um, and Bill has uh, been lining up the work for the summer. Mainly work. There is, yep. It, it, I can share that out again if it would be easier, but it is. there's a link in my board report. Really quick highlights, let's see. Communication subcommittee, um, something, a quick version of some things that worked and some things haven't worked, more thoughts to do there. Right. Um, the community group, they've got the ambassador roles. We voted on those stipends uh, last board meeting. So there's now a ambassador, uh, which is a staff member uh, at each school to, but they're working with students also to um, build more outreach and inclusiveness, primarily for new family members. Um, student success plans, all three schools have taken them on in different ways and different levels. So. There's more conversations we had about learning across the schools and continuing to tune the goals, but that, well, I'll just add my own editorial. I, I think that's a really heavy lift and it's a pretty radical kind of going back to what you were saying about the conformist view of education. It's a pretty radical flip to say schools exist to help each student figure out where they want to go and help them get to where they want to go instead of saying schools exist to say this is the target you get there. So uh, that's a lot of work, a lot more work still to do, but uh, it's exciting we're down that path. Um, 
the uh, data committee. Uh, as Susan mentioned, the survey was run for staff. We had very high turnout. A lot of effort went into that in terms of making time during PD time and things, but uh, we had very high turnout. And um, the yeah. confidence, cultural confidence, or the, the and, building cultural confidence group was the last one. And what I'm trying to remember what their update is. Well, just professional development and lots right. of forms over the, the course of the year and working to. Um, develop probably asynchronous content for uh, new people that come on board during the year, uh, other kind of more itinerant staff, substitutes, coaches. So those are the primary goals and outcomes. Or they're working on that last piece moving forward. So, I mean, it's a little bit under the radar, right? You're not getting monthly board reports and um, you know, even we're only getting even the DI group was only getting a quarterly update, but I would say all five committees have been hard at work and very successful at implementing things. It's kind of exciting to see, you know, given where we started two years ago, just exactly how much we have started implementing and making happen. We always knew this was a five year process, and nobody's claiming we're anywhere close to a finish line. Don't think the finish line exists, but uh, a lot of real work is happening. Uh, any other business? Anybody have a request for other business? Anybody have a request for future agenda items? The floor is open for public comment. Would anybody else like to make uh, anybody like to make a public comment? I will just put in a quick plug for the cultural fair that the middle school is having on Wednesday night this week, right, Richard? From six to eight. Wednesday, six p.m. Yes, thank you, Susan. That's uh, tomorrow night. Come on over. Steam room, right? That that's correct. I guess I would add, don't forget to vote. The school budget is on the ballot for I think it's June 12th, second to whatever the second Tuesday, 13th. And of course you can vote absentee or in person uh preceding the vote day. Uh <clears throat> any other public comment? Oh, the um Modern Band Jam is happening this week too. Great. Tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening. Uh, our next board meeting is a week from tonight, June 6th, uh, 6 p.m. in the library and on Zoom. Uh, and then there's one more board meeting uh, two weeks from that uh, until we take a break in July. Any requests for information or follow up? Okay, the remaining agenda are all executive session items. We will not take a vote on anything except adjournment. Um, so people are welcome to drop out if they want. I would make a motion to go into executive session under one MRSA 4056A, discussion of personnel evaluation superintendent. Is there a second? I will second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Passes 5 0. We will go into executive session. Have a good night, everyone.